Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. Today's session, using fountain fills with Steve Spence. Brought to you by Conde Systems. In today's session, we're going to talk about fountain fills. You'll find the icon for fountain fills almost to the very bottom of your toolbox on the left-hand side. If we click, you'll see a jump out menu and the second choice is fountain fill. We've already talked a good bit about uniform fill and this session we'll talk about the fountain fill. We'll click on fountain fill and you see a box come up and we'll put that box next to the box that I drew and begin to examine it. At the very top you'll see that we have type and if we click on the arrow you can see that there are four different types of fountain fill. Lineal, radial, conical, and square. And if you look at this box you can see what they're talking about with each of these terms. Lineal changes from left to right or vice versa. Radial is primarily used in circles or ovals. It starts at the center and radiates out. Conical is something like looking down on a cone with this being the peak of the cone and then radiating out in all directions is the color and square. Now things don't stop there. Let's go back to radial because this probably illustrates the point the best. We can change the radial by putting our cursor over this little box and moving the center. And you can see we get quite a different appearance as we do that. So we can make light appear to come in from the upper left or the upper right or anywhere else. Or of course we can put it back in the center. Now if we put that in our real box and yet let's use some type of color. We'll come back to this in a minute so don't don't worry about it. If we fill that you can see that it's light colored right in the center. But if we change that you can see now that it radiates from up in the upper right hand corner. But we're not done because not only can we change the point of radiation, be it a square, circle, conical, or any other shape, we can also include two different colors. So we can change from a red, it's currently to a white, and that's very often what's used. But in this case, let's take it to uh, a yellow. Oops. And we do that by clicking on this drop down menu and just select your color. And now we have a red going to yellow in the center. And as before, we can move the point wherever we want. We'll put it up in the upper right hand corner this time and click on it and you can see the yellow is up here, the red down here, and it just gradually fades from one to the other. But we're not done. Let's go up and look at lineal. This one is very commonly used as we want to move from one color into another. And just as we can do this with radial, we can move the point at which that changes. We can move it up and down to a corner or we can move it over to the right hand side. Let's put it in the corner just for sport. And now you can see it's yellow down here, red up here, and of course it transitions between. You can use a combination of any two colors. It doesn't matter. Click on the arrow and you get a drop down menu or you can pick your own color using the eyedropper. 
So two colors, you can choose whatever you want, and we'll come back to talk about the custom position in a little bit. And there's more to learn. Let's go up to our little box and let's select radial again. And when we do, you'll see that these two uh, number boxes are not grayed out anymore. And we can do with them what we were doing just with our uh, mouse a little while ago. Let me, as we raise this number, the yellow part goes more and more to the right. This number takes it up or down. You can also type in a preset number if you have one. We're still not done. Let's go over to this little box that is grayed out and has a lock on it. And let's unlock that box. When we do, you see that it's 256 steps. Now what that means is this. The best way to explain it is we're going to take that down to just 7. And we'll click OK. Now, do you see what it's talking about? It is talking about these individual steps from red to orange to orangey yellow to yellowish to yellow and to yellow yellow. In the normal default setting, there are 256 of these. And these circles or rings uh, referred to as steps are just tiny, tiny graduations from one color to the the next. We'll do an undo to go back to where we were and zoom back out and we'll go over and get our fountain fill box again and so you can see that it is back to 256 it's locked and it's grayed out. That's typically where we'd want it to be. Now a side note Occasionally, I see that this type of color transition does not sublimate well. You will see the transitions in very hard-edged circles in your final product. If that happens to you, you are probably using PowerDriver. Change to the Condi ICC profile and that should go away. All right, let's go back up to our box once again. We're going to select Linear, and when we do, you'll see that this box becomes ungrayed, and this is an angle. We can do it using the little stepper uh, buttons, or we can just type it in. If we type in 90, it changes it from horizontal to vertical and back again. Uh, we can make this anything we want and it just turns that um, transition from one side to another. Step pad, which is typically zero, can be increased up to 49. And as we do, the edge, the change between one color and the other, becomes far more distinct. We'll put it on this bigger screen so you can see it. And you can see this is what is being referred to as the pad, the area where the transition actually takes place. And so we can control that somewhat using the pad edge uh, percentage buttons. All right, now let's go down to the bottom, the color blend. We've talked about this to some degree already. We can select whatever colors we want. We'll do purple and we'll do kind of a chalk or cream color and uh, if we click OK, you can see what happens. Purple to chalk. That's simple enough. 
Now, here is another way to transition from one color to another. And to show you this, I'm going to go back to the red and yellow that we had earlier. To transition from this, when I click on this button, you can see from here to here, from red to yellow, it goes around the circumference of that circle. And if we select OK, you can see that it's yellow to red, just like it was before. No big deal. But if we select the opposite side, what we get is from yellow all the way around to red, or vice versa, if you will. And when we click on that, wow, what a difference. Because now we pick up all the colors in that color disk from here to here. And they include greens and blues and violets all the way back up to red. So this is a way to get multi almost psychedelic color into a design. All right, let's go back to what we had before where it's just two colors. It makes it a little easier to understand and see what I'm going to show you next. Now that we have two colors again, we're going to look at the midpoint. And it, the best way to do this is with the radial. And what we can do is we can change the midpoint from very small to very large. And you can see the, this is primarily the midpoint right here. And you can see a little bit the steps from one to the other. So, and this you'll not get rid of. This it is what it is. So as you play around with this, the midpoint uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. You won't see those steps because it is very, very gradual. Uh, but if you change your midpoint and make it different, uh, either large or small, let's zoom back out. then you're probably going to see those steps. All right. Let's set that back about <clears throat> midpoint. And let's look at the next to the last thing. And that is custom. Now, in the custom, we're still working with two colors. At one extreme, we have red. At the other extreme, we have yellow, and we can call up this marker, which can change where the transition occurs along this line. You can also type in a preset if you'd want to. Let's put in 75, which will obviously move it three-quarters of the way up the scale, and uh, you can find some consistency by doing that. The others down here is the opportunity to type in actual color codes. For instance, if you want a red that is 255, 10, 40, That's still a red, but it's a specific red, a little different than the pure 255. You can do that by typing it in there. Now, notice that we are using RGB. And then, of course, you can also use the mixers and the palettes that we talked about in the colors section um, that has been recorded. And you can check that out on YouTube or Conde TV. Okay, the, unless you are really comfortable with this, this is probably a good place to stay away from. 
it's easy to really get confused in here. And you can do pretty much everything right here. Uh, in fact, you can do 99.9% .9 of anything you want just working with two color. And it's a lot simpler, easy to, easier to keep in your mind. But if you would like, you can go to custom and you can even go and preset your own colors to make sure you get exactly the color you want. Don't forget, too, that this color palette is more than just a few colors. It can be scaled down to offer additional colors as you might need them. Now, the final thing in Fountain Fill are the presets. Click on the arrow, and you see a long list of presets. Let's look at Barber Pole. Now, barber poles uh, typically um, go round and round with red, white, and blue stripes. And that's exactly what this is. You can see the red, white, blue, red, white, blue, and so on going down the barber pole. Now, one of the things that you can know is that you can click on one of these and you can transition that to something else. If you zoom in here, you can see that we have added a yellow in there. Down here, we'll add a purple. Right, right there. Uh, so you can play with these a little bit um, to do really weird designs if you want to. But the presets are there for you to, to use. And occasionally on things like barber poles... Uh, it's really nice to have. It can save you an awful lot of work just by knowing that those are there. Alien Sky, that's purple and red. Baby, it's kind of a pink, blue. Uh, I use this a lot for baby picture frames uh, where you don't know whether the baby's going to be boy or a girl. You kind of mix them together and it gets you out of trouble. Blue wash, this is just nothing but a very dark blue. It's almost like midnight. Then we have presets. This is cylindrical using green and white and purple and red and black and blue and so on all down through the, the centrical, uh, circular, then the conical, uh, then the cylinders. Cylinders is a little different. That's kind of like the barber pole. Um, some of these are really helpful because you can cheat and make a cylinder look like a cylinder. For instance, let's take this pink one. And that kind of looks like a cylinder all on its own. Let's fill in with it. And let's back out. And if we make that long and slender... It pretty much looks like a cylinder. Um, it's certainly closer than anything I could create on my own. Let's pull our, oops, let's pull our, select our cylinder, and let's go back to our fountain fill and look at some more presets. Got lots of cylinders. And then we have several special ones, gold plated. Neon pink. This is great to use with um, breast cancer survivors and things like that. Uh, you have a number of washes. Here's radial, of course, um, and then squares with various colors. These are exactly what we were doing up here, except they're, they're already made for you. And if you want to use them uh, pre-made, you can. Target, you see what it creates for you, literally a target. Uh, it would take considerable time to create that. Uh, it just would. It would drive you out of your mind, probably. It would just take a long time to create that. When you've got it right here, if you just know that it exists... You can jump over here and create it. And you can change the color scheme if you want to. Uh, test pattern is just like a television set. 
uh, gives you the test bars, and this is great to have for testing your printer. You can go in and compare this, the finished product, to what you see on the screen, and you can see how far off your screen is. You can even adjust your screen a little bit if you want to, to try and match it up as close as possible. Remember, the screen is never going to predict the exact outcome of a sublimated or printed image. It may be very close, but to get it exact to what is on the screen is difficult at best. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. And there are some tools out there that help you do that, some special monitoring devices that attach to the front of your screen and try and compensate for the various colors. I've tried a number of those. I've never found one that really did a great job. I've never tried really expensive ones. I've always used the little cheap ones. And uh, it just isn't worth the trouble. With today's sublimation especially, you must always select your object first. With today's sublimation, uh, especially with the Condi ICC profile, what you see on the screen, what you expect to get from a image uh, is so very close that it, the colors are just so good that it just really isn't an issue for most people. All right, so that's an overview of Fountain Fill. There are lots of things you can do with this. And so let's take a look at a couple of things that you might actually do besides a test pattern. Here are some possibilities for using the fountain fill. Uh, let's look up here first. And here you see that uh, name badge for Jim Brown, the UGM Corp, whatever that is. Um, and that logo would just be lost if we put it in that dark blue, purplish background. But if we take that uh, white and kind of feather it out around the logo, it makes it jump out. and makes it unique and, and uh, more usable. Over here we have another name badge. This one's done more just for the decorative purposes of it. All we've done here is use a linear pattern and turned it at 45 degrees, as you can see here. And it makes his name jump out. It, it uh, puts a little decorative thing on there. We could put it in the center, still be decorative. Uh, I put it over to the edge just to, to display that, but um, you could do a lot of different things with it. Here's a flag pattern. This came out of the presets. It's just text with the uh, pattern fill, uh, or I'm sorry, fountain fill uh, inside of it. Here I took the same text and put a box behind it and did the uh, fountain fill in the background. Down here you see sunset designs and this is the sunset, the preset for it and you can see there's an orange down at the bottom and red at the top and then some text in there. This might work for name badge, it might work for some print media type of thing, all kinds of different possibilities. And then over here we did just the rainbow. This is the um, prism light, if you will, and um, uh, it can be used for all kinds of different things. So just a few examples of how you might use this in a real day-to-day -day kind of application. So that is the fountain fill. Hope you learned something. Hope you can make money with it, and I wish you luck.